Arnold finally teams up with his longtime action nemesis Sylvester Stallone, just a couple years past their primes, for a super fun prison break movie that probably would have done really well in 1995. It's 2013's Escape Plan. Hello friends and welcome back to Every Arnold Movie Ever, episode 33. 2013 was supposed to make Arnold the comeback kid, but after his housekeeper scandal, his slate of projects was wiped clean and he was forced to start all over. His first comeback film, The Last Stand, fell hard at the box office and Arnold needed something big to get him back on his feet. Enter his second project titled The Tomb, a team up with Sylvester Stallone with an easy to understand high concept. Stallone and Schwarzenegger break out of an impenetrable prison. It seemed promising on paper, but the underperformance of The Expendables 2 and the outright rejection of The Last Stand put the success of The Tomb in doubt. The script for this movie was written back in 2008 by Miles Chapman, whose previous film credit was Roadhouse 2, Last Call. Screenwriter Jason Keller was brought in for rewrites, but he used a pseudonym for this, Arnell Jesko. Never a good sign if the writer doesn't want his name associated with the script he wrote. Cut to two years later, Bruce Willis was in negotiations to star with Antoine Fuqua directing. And when that fell through, it came to Stallone and Arnold with Mikhail Hefstrom directing. Then they changed the title of the movie from The Tomb to Escape Plan and... Uh... Yeah. Look, as I suspected with these later movies, they're just isn't much information about the making of them. Uh, in Arnold's book, he basically just describes the plot and says they were tired from shooting the prison riot scene. One interesting tidbit I did find though regarding the escape plan is that it's the closest thing to Commando 2 we'll ever see. That's weird, but writer Steven D'Souza says his script for Commando 2, which obviously never happened, but you can find the script online. The thrust of that movie was that John Matrix becomes a security specialist hired to make a building secure, and then he had to break into the building he designed. D'Souza said, If Commando 2 resembled anything, it was the one that just came out with Sly and Arnold, Escape Plan, where you have to break out of a place you designed. And with that, I may have inaccurately set expectations for Escape Plan. It is not Commando 2. Uh, but let's find out if this is the comeback Arnold was hoping for. Escape Plan opens with Ray Breslin. Hey, Arnold's name was Ray in The Last Stand. Burning the Bible in a jail cell. Then, naturally, because this is Stallone, he easily kicks the shit out of people three times his size. Then we get a totally radical 90s style title screen ripped straight from speed. Next, Ray stages an incredible prison break, and it turns out he's part of a security company to test the integrity of their maximum security facilities nationwide. Ray intentionally goes to prison and then tries to escape. The first eight minutes of this movie are Ray escaping, and then the next eight minutes recap how he escaped. Any break requires three things. I want to lay out, understand the routine, and help from outside or in. That mops up the first 15 minutes of the movie, but we are introduced to the supporting cast, including Vincent D'Onofrio as his business partner, Amy Ryan as his semi-love interest, kind of creepy, and 50 Cent as his tech guy. The warden whose prison he escaped from is shocked, I tell ya, that they were able to get past his defenses. What the hell is going on here? Calm down, warden. And asks a logical but deeply personal question. What kind of man would choose to spend most of his life in prison? That seems to cut deep. And you know what? Stallone doesn't have a good answer for it. And then Ray does something on 50 Cent's computer. Check it out. That's good. Very smart. But that's smart enough. <laughs> it's never explained what 50 was working on or how Ray makes it better. It's just some cubes that he turns into a bigger cube, like the world's dumbest game of Tetris. It's supposed to convey that 50 Cent is good at computers, but Ray is even better. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> what are you guys doing? They don't know. The truth is neither Sly nor 50 Cent knew what the hell was going on on those screens because it was added later. Insert tech bullshit. Ray's company is then approached by the CIA claiming they have an unbreakoutable prison where they store the worst of the worst criminals. And we're currently testing a prototype to deal with people no government wants on their books. 
It's conveniently unsanctioned and privately funded. These institutions are off the grid. There are no trials, there's no convictions. These people are just disappeared. D'Onofrio thinks it's a good idea because the money is good. It sounds shady. It's essential that none of you know the location of the incarceration. But for some reason, Ray agrees. When do we start? We just did. His team tries to tag him, and the tracking chip is <laughs> immediately removed. <laughs> Ray is clearly being betrayed, but by whom? Hmm, there are only like three options so far. Then he ends up in the secret prison. Warden Hobbs is played by Jim Caviezel after he was Jesus Christ, but before he was Jim Caviezel. Hobbs is not the warden Ray expected. Where's Warden Marsh? There is no Warden Marsh. So he immediately tries to bail on this situation, and it's hilarious how quickly he busts out his emergency evacuation code. Wait, my evacuation code is 310275. All right, I'm ready to break out of this prison. Well, I can't break out of this prison. Here's my evacuation code. I don't think so. You're here now, and you belong to me. And finally, we get what we came for. We own you. Come <laughs> back off. With his first on-screen goatee ever. Yes, he's had stubble before, he's had beards before, even the rare stash, but never a goatee. He plays Emil Rottmeier, security expert for a mysterious guy named Mannheim, described as... He has this habit of taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor. And Arnold and Sly's initial meeting is just as silly as their interactions in The Expendables. Don't get killed, if you say so. Ask them to kill the guy in here, they let his body rot for three days. Mm and to cancel the prison dance. Wouldn't want to fuck up the prom. Emil says he's only in prison because they're trying to extract the location of Mannheim from him, and he's basically a favor man in prison. You need a favor? <laughs> and it's funny because Emil would just not leave Ray alone. Why are you in here? You've heard that story before. Have you heard of the name? Don't you find that interesting? Then time before? What do you need? Did you find what you were looking for in the box? Who were you before you came in here? Why all the questions? Ray's plan is to get into the isolation area. Call it favor. So Emil obliges. Okay. <coughs> then takes an unnecessary shot at vegetarians. <coughs> <laughs> you hit like a vegetarian. And then we get our first on-screen fight ever between Arnold and Sylvester Stallone. <coughs> and into the isolation tank they go, where they suffer torture by light bulbs? That seems like just as much light as I have lighting me right now. Also seems like they can just turn around. I will say, Cuvizo is already a better villain than Cortez in The Last Stand. He has hobbies, like a butterfly collection, and he speaks in hushed tones. And you're lucky the man you killed was not I value. Which is great for a villain, because you expect them to be all blustery, and they're not, they're just speaking very softly until they have to explode. I wonder if that's gonna happen. We also get a surprise appearance by Dr. Alan Grant, playing a doctor of humans this time. 100% forgot that Sam Neill was in this. Ray starts to put his plan to escape in motion, but he seems a little careless about it. Like when he asks Emil to get him a piece of metal while standing way too close to a guard. Emil does help him by antagonizing Hobbs. Where is Victor Mannheim? I could draw your map. Look. There. Uh, Hobbs did not find it funny, so he puts a hose in his mouth. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but Emil does get the medal, and in exchange, Ray tells Emil what he does. For the past eight years, I've been breaking at facilities for the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Someone wanted this place tested, but it was a setup. They wanted to bury me. I don't know who, but I'm going to find out. Again, Ray is just way too casual <laughs> about explaining his plan out in the open. The most he can manage is like a half-hearted hand near his mouth. Hey, don't tell anybody, I got a plan to escape. Ray spouts off all this science stuff, which just sounds hilarious coming from Stallone's mouth. At 100 degrees centigrade, steel expands 0.03 cubic centimeter, and those rivers are gonna come right off. And they know the audience is thinking the same thing, so they cover it up with some funny dialogue. You don't look that smart. You don't either. Hang on, what? That retort makes no sense. Ray is the one saying all the sciencey shit. What does Amel's intelligence have to do with any of this? Emil creates another distraction by starting a lunchtime brawl, giving Arnold another funny moment. Your mother, she was my favorite whore in Marrakesh. She could polish a helmet. And I should mention, 
they have this Muslim character here who could have very easily just become the stock terrorist character, uh, but they actually put in a little work to add dimension to him. Like he feels like uh, a more fleshed out character than what this normally would be. Now back in isolation they go where Ray starts his escape plan. And this is my favorite part of the movie when Arnold freaks out yelling in German while Ray escapes. <laughs> It's a fun scene to see Arnold pretend to be scared, an acting ability he hasn't really had to flex throughout his career. <laughs> Ray somehow makes it into the bowels of the prison and is not careful at all, just wantonly breaking shit along the way. <laughs> And then we get the big reveal of this movie. The tomb isn't underground like they suspected. I always thought that was a nice twist and a new problem for them to overcome. So Ray has to get back to his cell before anyone notices because he can't just jump into the ocean. Uh, but that might be difficult since he broke the fucking ship. Might be hard to hide the fact that the ship is filling up with water. Meanwhile, his security team back home is very slowly figuring out what's going on. And the other big mystery of who put Ray in this prison gets revealed. Cordos is in his name, is it? Why wasn't I alerted? There's a lot of people paying money to make sure that facility is unbreakable. Hobbs learns that Ray is Ray because you make sure he stays there forever. <gasps> D'Onofrio doesn't want Ray to get out. And now it's on because Ray and Rottmeier are on Hobbs's radar and Hobbs is gonna try to break Ray. Luckily, he's got a motivational speaker in Rottmeier. Come on, you must fight. You can do it. Come on, you gotta keep going. You gotta stay strong. Don't give up. Don't let them break you. I never thought I would see Arnold playing the Mickey character to Rocky, but here we are. You know, and at this point I'm realizing this is totally a Stallone movie that also happens to have Arnold in it as evidenced by the reveal that Ray was a lawyer who put someone away, but the guy broke out and killed Ray's wife and son. Taking a man's life is nothing. Taking his heart, that's everything, isn't it? So Ray says putting people in prison wasn't enough. I had to, I wanted to, make sure they stayed in there, didn't get out. Hang on, hold on a second, wait, 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 wait. This movie was already trying to sell us on Stallone being some sort of prison break genius with extensive scientific and structural knowledge. Also, he owns this business, so he's a businessman. And now we also have to buy? He has a law degree? And during this conversation, Emil casually mentions he has a daughter too. I understand, I have a daughter. Totally a throwaway line, nothing you have to remember. Uh, then we go inside Ray's eye. <laughs> to watch him develop a plan to get out. Look at this insane freeze frame. He's inside his own eye. Now that Hobbs knows who Ray is, Ray has to buy some time by telling Hobbs he can help find Mannheim. So he builds a contraption and starts recruiting other prisoners to his cause. Hobbs joins them and also pretends to be helping Hobbs in exchange for a chance to see the sky while he prays. But that's a ploy so he can use the contraption Ray built to try and figure out where they are. Then Ray tries to enlist Dr. Grant. What you're doing here is wrong. And the conflicted doctor then goes and actually rereads the Hippocratic Oath. Like, he really needed to read the whole thing to remember that the basic gist is do no harm. Anyway, that's enough for Grant. He's in! What do you want me to do? Meanwhile, in case you forgot the Q-Vizel is the bad guy, he caresses this guy's head, and Ray and Emil start a riot that begins their real escape. Once again, it's Ray running the show, and Emil is along for the ride. Got 11 minutes to get top shot. I hope the doc made contact. But it does give us a funny moment when Ray takes over the camera system. Say cheese. Then it's a race against the clock because Rottmeier's contact is coming to pick them up in a helicopter. However, their route of escape is shut down. And I forgot to mention this, but Vinnie Jones plays Hobbs' muscle. I forgot to mention it because his character is less fleshed out than any Sven Ol Thorson character in other Arnold movies. And Stallone beats him pretty easily. He just kinda... <laughs> knocks him down some stairs. <laughs> There's another funny moment here where an engineer tries to be a tough guy. We're on our way. I'll take care of it. No, wait, wait. And only takes care of it if what he was taking care of was his, his own consciousness. Eventually, Amo makes a topside, but Ray is still trapped below. He's being tracked down by Q Viesel, who gets so frustrated, he finally raises his voice. Raslin! Your time is up! Raslin! And Arnold gets a cool close up and a big hero moment with a gun. <laughs> 
Meanwhile, Ray flushes himself out into the ocean. And we get our final showdown with Cubizel, complete with an opportunity for a big catchphrase from Stallone. And for his catchphrase, he chose... Boom. Onomatopoeia. Hmm. Okay. At least we get a funny reaction from Caviezel. Hmm. But don't worry, they don't leave Arnold hanging. He gets the last line, even though Hobbs is already dead. Have a lovely day, asshole. Which is a callback to Hobbs telling him to have a lovely day earlier in the movie. So have a lovely day, Mr. Rottenmayer. Which I totally forgot about. But it's better than onomatopoeia? And then there's one more big twist. The woman who put Ray in the prison. There's been the eyes and ears inside the agency, and she's also my daughter. Yes, it was all just a setup to get Emil out of prison, and he turns out to be. Your man, hi. Oh no! Big twist! <laughs> uh, Mannheim was the guy that Cuvizel was after that we never actually see. Didn't see that coming. Should have. I mean, I guess he should have. Honestly, I wasn't even thinking about it, nor did I care. But it's a fun little moment that should have been when Arnold and Sly parted ways. But they gotta give us one more awkward exchange. I hope I never see you again. That hurts. Which is nearly identical to... Why don't we have dinner? Sure, when? In a thousand years. Too soon. And that's escape... Oh, wait. <laughs> I totally forgot about 50 Cent and Amy Ryan's roles in this. It seemed like they were set up to play a big part in the finale and find Ray, but nope, nope. They had nothing to do with his rescue at all. Instead, they sadistically trapped D'Onofrio in a shipping container on a freight ship where he will die a slow, painful death with no chance of escape. And for some reason, they also removed some of his clothes. I suppose that's poetic justice and in line with Ray wanting criminals to never be able to escape. But still, it's fucked up, man. Ray! In just the couple movies I've covered that have Sly in them, he has cut off the villain's head after he killed him and trapped his business partner to suffocate and die. Good lord. <laughs> and that's Escape Plan. Reviews for Escape Plan were right on the line, 50% on Rotten Tomatoes, worse than The Last Stand, and I think the feeling was that the material didn't rise up to meet the occasion. And also, the occasion, Arnold and Sly teaming up, was 20 years too late. When it was released here in the U.S. on October 18th, 2013, it landed in fourth place with 9.8 million. That's about double the opening weekends of both Sly and Arnold's last movies combined. It ended its domestic run with a measly $25 million, which is still twice that of The Last Stand, but still a failure, particularly with a $70 million price tag. But, silver lining, the movie was an international success, bringing its worldwide total to $137 million. It also made Escape Plan something of a mini-franchise, appropriately turning to direct-to-video, but keeping Stallone in the lead. Arnold, however, wisely bowed out. And unfortunately, what Arnold fans hoped was an anomaly in The Last Stand was crystallized with Escape Plan. Arnold, the invincible king of the box office in the 80s and 90s, was now very clearly, merely, vincible. All of that context aside, Escape Plan is pretty good. Not bad. It's okay. <laughs> Look, in 2013, the expectations of an Arnold Sly team-up were not the same as they would have been in 1988 or even 1999. But honestly, it feels like the best version of a direct-to-video movie you can get. Except this was a theatrical release, and it cost $70 million to make. It definitely feels more like a Stallone movie than an Arnold Sly co-venture, since the first 20 minutes are dedicated to setting up Sly's character, he gets the emotional backstory, and he comes up with all the plans for the escape. Luckily, Arnold is ultimately revealed as smarter than initially portrayed, and he gets to have some fun, the signature scene being when he's yelling in German, pretending to be vulnerable. <laughs> Prison Break stuff can be cool because it requires some clever thinking on the part of its characters, and that's when the movie's at its best, putting their plans into motion, creating diversions, starting riots, and trying to trick the warden. It also, surprisingly, treats its Muslim character with respect and gives him a character arc with a noble death. Unfortunately, the rest of the action is pretty basic 
basic and lacks ingenuity. Sly's fight with Vinnie Jones ends when Vinnie just kind of trips and falls down some stairs and breaks his neck. <laughs> eh. Even the, I suppose, long-awaited fight between Arnold and Sly is disappointing. Honestly, the whole selling point of the movie is Arnold and Sly teaming up. One of those dream team combos, but it doesn't end up being as fun as you'd expect. Stallone is stiff as a board, so he's not bringing the levity. It's all on Arnold, and he manages to get the funniest moments, the yelling in German, smiling through camera, but his interactions with Stallone are just so awkward. That script needed one more polished draft to beef up their interactions. As for Arnold's character, he's put in the weird position of not driving the plot, at least not actively. And obviously that's by design to preserve the twist at the end, but you don't know that for most of the runtime. So it's unusual to have Arnold star in a movie where he isn't actively the plot engine. Would this have worked if you swapped their roles? I don't think so. Arnold wouldn't have fit in the Stallone role. Stallone doesn't fit in the Stallone role. He's playing a genius former lawyer <laughs> turned prison breaker, and I just never bought it. Now, obviously this is a Homer pick, but I would have gone with Jason Statham in the role of Stallone and kept Arnold where he was. The whole movie would have benefited from Arnold teaming with a younger action star, especially since the appeal of an Arnold Sly team up had worn off with Expendables 1 and 2. Regardless, I still think Escape Plan is worth a watch, if only for Arnold's German tirade and poor drawing skills. All right, let's get to the stats. Acting chop six, he's a rascal who speaks German. Kill count 18 for a total of 717. Catchphrase, ich kann nicht aushalten, ich kann es nicht mehr aushalten, ich halte die Hitze nicht mehr aus. And here are the Every Arnold Movie Ever rankings. You've got your cameos and T2 3D. 29 to 20 remains unchanged. 19, Junior. 18, Escape Plan. Better than The Last Stand, but nowhere near his top tier work and less risky, therefore less interesting than End of Days at 17. And the rest also remain unchanged. Next up, Arnold gets down and dirty with David Ayer in his first truly compelling post-governor movie that, if I remember correctly, is pretty damn good. But am I remembering that wrong? I can't, uh, I can't remember. It's been like nine years since I've seen it. I guess we're all gonna find out together. Well, listen all y'all, it's a sabotage. <laughs> uh, that almost works. But like only if you say it like Super Mario. Listen all y'all, it's a sabotage. All right, what the fuck, see you next time.